I think that the future is finally here. Mm, nearly. If cars are boys' toys, then flying cars are sci-fi wet dreams. Are we on the verge of people flying in the skies on their daily commutes or making a run to the grocery store? Welcome to the embodiment of the future. I'm Will, that is the Aero Evito flying car, and this is China Driven. Aerot is one of the companies in China that has captured the imagination of people around the world with their EV vertical takeoff vehicles. People are watching on as they show footage of personal flying machines and with the unveiling of their latest product, the idea of flying cars is finally becoming a reality and taking form. But first, one does not simply walk into Mordor. Nor does one simply make a flying car. This company was started 10 years ago. And in 2020, whilst the rest of the world were unsure if they were going to work in the morning or not, Herschel Pung, the CEO and founder of Xpeng, invested into the company. In fact, Erot secured that investment for Herschel Pung after he experienced a flight in one of their products. So, obviously, the product speaks for itself. Actually, during that teeny tiny world pandemic, Erot managed to design, develop, and fly three different products, including the two-seater prototype, the X1 and the X2. Some people were obviously quite busy during the pandemic. So this is actually the first generation eVTOL for this company. It was built by the founder and they call it an eVTOL flying motorcycle. It looks a bit basic compared to what we're going to see or from the other products, but also maybe a little bit dangerous. Look at where your legs would be compared to some of those blades. Either way, this is the product that started the ball rolling for this company. So the T1 was developed and tested in 2019, and it gained international acclaim, winning multiple high-level design awards, including the Red Dot Design and the IF Design Award. In terms of raw stats, you're talking a payload of 150 kilos, can fly at heights of under a thousand meters and it's got an endurance of around 20 to 30 minutes and a top speed of 120 kilometers an hour. It does have navigation in here in the form of an iPad in a holder but you do get two cool little joysticks to fly it with. It's also completely autonomous as well. These are just if you want to take manual control. Okay so this is the Xpeng X1. Now a lot of people think because it's called the X1 this is the first generation but actually it's far from it. You have the flying motorcycle, and then the T1, and in between the T1 and the X1, there's another one that's not here called the, well, it doesn't really have a name, the two-seater prototype. Um, it was in a one plus one configuration, still a quadcopter, but it's quite important for the company because that was the vehicle that Herschel Pung took a ride in before he invested in the company. Now that had its first maiden voyage in April 2020, and then this was developed and tested by the end of 2020. Also at the end of 2020, the company Aerot officially crossed the threshold of 10,000 combined test flights throughout all the generations. In terms of raw stats, this is a improvement over the T1, 160 kilograms of payload for this one, 25 to 30 minutes of endurance, still under a thousand meters, that's for regulatory purposes, and a top speed of 130 kilometers an hour. This is probably Eret's most recognizable product so far. This is the Xpeng X2. You may have seen it at Xpeng stand at the Shanghai Auto or in an Xpeng showroom. The X2 came out in 2022. In June, they had their first unmanned flight and by July, they had their first manned flight. Now, the X2, unlike the T1 and X1, moves away from this open cockpit design, instead has an enclosed carbon fiber monocoque. And they also say, that the designer of this is the same designer as the Xpeng P7. So what you end up getting is a very sporty looking product. Unlike the other models, this has a fully fleshed out interior, complete with some nice interior styling touches like 
ambient lighting that are better than you'll find on the new Model 3. There's also some splash of color in here, orange and blue. There is dual digital instrument panels and a central touchscreen, which is for your navigation because this is completely autonomous. Unlike the other ones, which also have manual controls, this 100% autonomous. So this flies just like the rest of them at under a thousand meters, has a payload of 160 kilos. The top speed, we don't have a figure for it, but it looks fast. It's also got these really cool gold wing doors. I mean, just look at it. It looks pretty damn sporty. So obviously this is an EV toll. So that means that there is somewhere to charge. Underneath here is where you can plug in your personal vertical takeoff and landing craft and get some juice for it. You're a thousand meters up in the air and the worst thing happens, something goes wrong. But don't fear, Aero have recently demonstrated its parachute safety systems in action, deploying and bringing the craft safely to ground. But this is all the past. In line with Aero's vision, these are all EV vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, but they're all non-wheeled. They're not really flying cars. But forget the past, this is the future. This is what happens when you combine EV tolls with the type of transportation that millions use daily. This is what ignites wonderment and excitement. This is a true flying car. That classic imaginary scenario, you're stuck in traffic on the way home for ages, you haven't moved. Car horns blaring, people getting mad, and then you just unfold your wings and take to the skies, to the jealousy of everyone below you. Welcome to the interior of this EV toll. It's very purple, and there's a few things I want to point out. Namely, that that screen there, that huge, long panoramic screen, is actually completely see through. I think that's rather cool. But also, as every little boy knows, when some cool piece of future tech transforms on the outside, so should the inside. And right now, what you're looking at is the land mode. You can see the car mode there where there is the yoke steering wheel and the gear selector. But when it transforms into flying mode, you will see that that yoke will kind of fold away and then you will use solely that gear selector in order to, well, fly it. Although the EV tow flying car has captured imaginations, Aero also unveiled another vehicle at launch, something they call the modular flying car. It's basically a rugged looking six wheel all terrain vehicle from the future. And the modular and flying part come from its ability to haul around a personal EV tow in the back, deploying it when needed. Supposedly, the car will also be able to charge the EV tow whilst it's driving. They say this will be coming first before the flying car, but surely this is all just marketing spectacle. We can't actually expect them to build. Wait, what's that six wheel contraption? So there you have it, every little boy's dream, maybe finally becoming a reality. I'm Will, this was China Driven.